sure to stay to the end of the video. I'm so excited to show you what I made for you guys. It's gonna help you so much for applying to medical school next year. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Maggie. I'm a non-traditional pre-med student and I'm currently hoping to start medical school in 2021. So far, I've had 9.5 interview invites. I like to say 0.5 because technically, one of the interview invites was a telephone interview, which is like the pre-interview to the interview. So almost 10 interview invites and I'm really excited. I'm so grateful. Hard work really does pay off, I promise. And today I'm here to talk to you about five things that I really wish that I knew before applying to medical school. And just to give you a little bit of a background, the first time I applied to medical school was in 2017. So the summer, I guess 2016, the summer before my senior year of college, 2016, I took the MCAT, I applied to medical school. I ended up getting one interview out of four that I completed the complete application to. I got on the wait list and ultimately didn't get in. So from there, it's been about a few years. I moved to California, lived in San Diego, played a lot of beach volleyball. Um, what else did I do? I worked as a lab technician. I got my EMT certification and now my dog is coming in to say hi. Oh. My name is Oakley and I love to chase birds and squirrels. So anyway, after San Diego, I ended up moving to Seattle, which is where I'm living now. And I currently work as an EMT. I wanted to gain hands-on experience after working as a nanny for a couple years. And that's where I'm at right now. So this is my second time applying to medical school. And most of the tips that I'm gonna tell you are kind of mistakes that I learned from, from the first time applying in 2017. But there is one that I learned this cycle and I was quite taken by surprise because it just wasn't a thing the first time I applied. Anyway, we'll talk about it later. So number one thing that I wish I knew before applying to medical school was, oh, I, I wish I knew all about secondaries. I'm pretty sure the first time that I applied, I knew the term secondaries. I knew it was something after primaries, but I really probably didn't know much more than that. I don't really remember exactly what I knew about it, but I definitely didn't know a lot. So what I wish I knew is that each secondary has anywhere from one to six essays, which means that even though you spend hours and hours and hours perfecting your primary application, you're gonna spend more hours <laughs> perfecting your secondary applications and they're expected to be completed within two weeks of you getting them. Not only that, but you're gonna get a lot at one time if you apply to a lot of schools, which you should because you're supposed to cast a wide net unless you just wanna stay in a specific area and you're only gonna to apply to a few schools. But the first time that I applied, I applied to six schools and I was so overwhelmed by just six secondary applications, really just because I didn't know what they were. I didn't know that I was gonna to have to have more essays to write. So I wish I knew more about secondaries. And basically, if you don't know what they are now, it's just something that you're gonna receive from schools after you submit your primaries. So when you first submit your primary, it takes about four to six weeks to be verified. Once it's verified, it depends on the school whether or not you're just immediately gonna receive a secondary application or they'll go through their screening process and look through your primary application and then decide to either send you one or not send you one. So some are automatic and some aren't, but either way, you're gonna get them after your primary is verified, which takes four to six weeks. And then you're gonna have more essays to complete. And you're also maybe going to have to write more about your extracurriculars. It may be very redundant from your primary and it's kind of frustrating, but you got to do it because your application isn't complete and ready to be reviewed for an interview until you complete your secondaries. So number two is really just wishing that I knew that it was okay to take a gap year. Guys, if you are struggling to finish your MCAT and you haven't even done your primary application and it's like September, it's okay to just apply the next cycle. You don't wanna apply late because it's so incredibly expensive. And if you add up the cost of primaries plus secondaries plus taking up and, and blah, 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 it's incredibly expensive. And if you're applying late, you're not giving yourself the best chance possible. It's okay to take a gap year. I wish that I knew this. When I applied, it was kind of late. It wasn't super late, but I wish that I had just known it was okay to apply next cycle. I could have taken that time to work as an EMT then instead of waiting three years to do it. And I could have really 
perfected my personal statement. I could have gotten the great NCAT score that I ended up getting, but then I could have applied on the first day that NCAS opened and been incredibly early and gotten early interview invites. You know, there's so many pros to applying early versus late. And once it's get, and once it gets to September, October, that's only the difference of six months. Yeah, you're starting school a year later, but one year is not going to make a difference compared to the rest of your life. I've had about four interviews so far, and this application cycle compared to the last time when I had my first interview in 2017 is completely different. I remember in 2017, I'm pretty sure every question they asked me, I had an answer that related to horses, and it was probably really cringeworthy to the person interviewing me because the only experience I had to draw on was riding horses because that's all I knew and I didn't do anything else. I didn't have any other life experience. Between my experiences as an EMT, nanny, or riding horses, I can think of so many examples to give them and tell them my story and answer their question in a way that I can give them concrete examples from my life and talk about a variety of experiences that I've had. So it's okay to take a gap year. I probably would have been in medical school if I thought that and I just had waited to apply the next cycle instead of applying late when I didn't really know much about the process. So number three is I wish that I knew about Dr. Gray's resources. I talk about him a lot in my blog and I talked about him in the last video. I talk about him all the time because his resources are amazing and I consider him my pre-med advisor. Either Google or search on YouTube Dr. Gray or Medical School HQ. If you don't have a great pre-med advisor, just go ahead and consider him yours. I know for a fact I wouldn't have gotten as many interview invites as I have so far if it weren't for using his resources and taking them so seriously that every single step of the way I made sure I was doing what he said to do. He has resources on everything from primaries, secondaries, MCAT, writing your essays, writing your personal statement, seriously everything. Look him up. You won't regret it. And that brings us to number four, probably the most frustrating one on my list because this is one that I learned this cycle, not last cycle. And I really did think that I knew everything because I applied in the past and I learned from my mistakes, blah, 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 blah. No, I didn't. What I learned this cycle is that to have a complete secondary application, AKA to be considered for interviews, for some schools, not all, they may require a CASPER score. When I applied in 2017. This was kind of the thing. I had heard of it. And so what I thought this cycle was that you did need a CASPER score for some schools, but it was just at some point before the interview. I didn't realize to have a complete secondary, I would need to have the CASPER score. And then once I realized that and I started looking it up, I realized that you had to register, which took a few days, and then you had to take it. And then getting the score took about three weeks. So here I was super on top of it. I applied within the first few days of AMCAS opening and I was ready to go. I was like, oh yeah, I'm in the first batch of pre-med students. I got my, I got my application in on time. This is awesome. I'm doing great. Like I'm doing everything how I planned. And then I found out about the Casper and it's like, wow, three weeks, everything's done. My letters of recommendations are in, my essays are done. I was on top of my secondaries, but they weren't considered complete because I didn't have a Casper score. So please, if I already have a blog post all about it, read it. In the future, I'll do a video about it. Just know what it is so you're ready for it. Unlike me, <laughs> where I thought I was ready for everything and I wasn't ready for that. That brings us to number five. And number five is just wishing that I knew how to make a good school list. And the first time that I applied, this didn't really matter because I was overwhelmed by just four schools. So if I knew how to make a good list of 20 schools, it wouldn't have mattered because I wouldn't have been able to do that many secondaries. But this time, I really knew that this is going to be something that I had to get better at because I plan to apply to a lot of schools. I wanted to get in this cycle and I did not want to go through this process a third time. So what I did was use the MSAR. The MSAR is your best friend for applying to MD schools. The MSAR allows you to quickly and efficiently look up really important things about each school without having to go to their sites individually and figure out where that specific page is. So for example, I don't have the best GPA. I'm pretty sure my average GPA or my cumulative or science, whatever, maybe around 3.1, 3.3. I don't really know. I know that in my post back, I got a 3.6. I'll look it up and I'll put a picture up just to let you know for sure. But my GPA is low, that's the point. My GPA is low, so what I did when I went to the MSAR was I looked up not the average GPA, but the range of GPAs and the range of MCAT scores. So most medical schools have an average GPA that's 
quite a bit higher than my GPA, and I knew that, but the MSAR shows you the range of accepted medical students. So you can see whether a med school is accepting students with low GPAs around 3.0, 3.1, 3.2, and those were the schools that I applied to because my GPA was in that range. But there were some medical schools who had an average GPA the same as those kind of schools, but their range was really close to the average. So their average was uh, so their average was 3.7, but their range started at 3.6 or 3.5. So for schools like that where my GPA wasn't even in like the 10th percentile, I was like, okay, no, I'm not gonna apply there. There are a few schools that I just applied to based on the location, but for the majority of my schools where I wanted to really increase my chances of just getting an interview, I looked at the range of the GPA and MCAT scores. That was huge for me because if they've already accepted students in the past, that have lower GPA and MCAT scores, then they're probably gonna do it again and I probably have a higher chance of getting an interview. But that's definitely the number one thing that I did since I do have a lower GPA. And now I'm just gonna show you what I made for you guys so you can know all the important dates, apply to medical school on time, know when to start your essays, all the important things that I didn't know the first time that I applied to medical school. So this is just a quick overview of the calendar that I've made for you guys. It has things like choosing your MCAT date if you haven't done so already, when to start requesting your letters of recommendation and starting on your first draft of your personal statement. And then April and May really get into working on your descriptions for your extracurriculars, finalizing your personal statement, important dates for when you can start submitting your primary application. And everything from there on is just starting your secondaries, getting things that you need for your secondaries besides just essays. And then it just keeps going throughout the year to help you prepare for your interviews because of course you guys will be getting some and then planning flights because hopefully COVID will be over by next year and we won't have any more virtual interviews and things like that. So there's plenty of space to put in and really plan out when you're going to do all these things like writing your essays and things like that. And in the end, I have some resources for you guys to check out. All right, so the link for that is in the description. I really hope that this helps you apply to medical school next year or in the future because I seriously think that if I had had this, it would have made the world of difference because I didn't know half the things on this calendar the first time that I applied to medical school. So I really hope it helps. So anyway, if you watch this whole video, I really hope that it provided some value for you and it's going to help you in the future for when you apply to medical school. In the next couple of months, I'm going to be talking about all these topics in a lot more detail. So please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and comment below to just say hi or let me know what you've learned in your own pre-med journey. I would love to hear from you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'm sending you all the positive vibes for your own pre-med journey and getting into medical school and becoming doctors. I hope to be become your future colleague and yeah see you in the next video bye so far i've had 20 not 20 <laughs> i'm sweating <laughs>